Okay, thank you everyone for attending tonight's meeting. Uh, we are going to be discussing transportation and food service. Uh, Mr. Bashad is here to uh, go over his report with us, and we can go from there. So, Dave, you want to go ahead and start? Yeah, we'll uh, start. I gave, uh, passed out a little agenda kind of thing here just with some points of what we're going to talk about. Uh, first of all, we'll start with transportation and reviewing my staff um, that I have now. We have 23 full-time bus drivers. We have 13 van drivers that are driving every day. We have one monitor, two mechanics, and we have five sub-bus drivers now. So. We wanted to thank the board for the hourly increase for the subs. It has worked. Like I said, it would work. Like I begged you guys to raise it for how long? Two years. We were done. You know, the last two years have been hell for me and the two mechanics driving every day. It is such a relief right now to be able to do work in my office and not have to drive in the morning and drive in the afternoon and do two jobs in between, three jobs in between. I wanted to thank you. The $18 an hour worked. It definitely worked. And I have another guy started in a van last week. He's trying to get his bus license. So, and none of them are, appear to be going anywhere or leaving anytime soon. So, it has worked. Great. That's great to hear. Um, how many van drivers did you say we had? Thirteen. Thirteen. Do we have any van subs? No. Okay. So we still need subs for vans. Yeah, but it, yeah, it's, it's a tough job to fill because there's not a lot of work. Right. And in all honesty, I could throw a, a mechanic or myself on a, on a van run right now if this all works out with the bus drivers, which it seems to be doing. So the ones we did hire, and we did give them a raise too. Thanks for that. They're five good guys. They don't miss work. They're older guys. Everything's it's the best we've been since the pandemic yet, believe me. I mean, it's, I was just telling the one sub today, it's a relief to look, I put a board uh, down there and all the openings every day and the bus drivers just come in there and they're like, look at the board. Like today, it's all new names on there, it's all these new subs. So it's working out. They have to learn all the runs and it's taking some time. So we still have to drive, but it's not like a mandatory thing every single day. So, it's exciting uh, to hear. Yeah, they it's good. Moving forward. Yeah. Uh, we did uh, put a fee. There was one bus driver, Fred Waitman, and I put it in my report. And it was, it was probably talked about it last night. $250 because the state does the driving test for bus drivers, and it's free. But it takes six to eight weeks anymore to get a test scheduled. On the day he was to take his test, he was notified by the state that he wasn't. He was unable to take his test because our three trainers weren't certified by the federal government which is something that's new, which the IU or nobody else told us about. So they canceled his test, and he couldn't get another test for all this time, and he's ready to go, and I need him so bad. So Rittenhouse Bus Lines does the testing now, but they charge 250 bucks. So I went ahead and scheduled him because I could get him tested in two days, and I told him I would see if we could get it paid for because he wasn't going to have to pay. Now, the only thing is I told him he would have to sign an agreement to stay here for two years and we would want the money back. So that's reasonable. So yeah. who, who does our testing? You're saying the IU. No, well, our trainers. We have three trainers in well, house. And they can test. Yes. No, they can't test. They're our trainers. Okay. But, but they go through the IU with all the training material, and the IU tells them everything. They have to go to the IU for their training. So the IU should have notified us. I feel that you had. Like, nobody's going to tell you. You have to be registered with the federal government now be a trainer because they yeah they caught our guy going to take this test and said your paperwork's incomplete because it didn't have the signatures on it that it needed so that's how all that happened but I mean he wouldn't have paid the 250 bucks yeah. you know and that leads to a conversation down the road you know we train these people for free you know we have to pay our guys our trainers you know maybe we need to get an agreement off anybody we hire that they're going to stay here for two years yeah they normally a year is a what year, yeah. yeah. Other companies. What would you estimate right. a contractor saying? I'm saying it costs probably around three grand to get a bus license. Two, Two years. years would be fine. Yeah, 
I go, you gotta have them, if you're gonna train them, then you can't have them leave. Like, That's similar to what we for, do. You know, because these that guys will, will jump for a couple of bucks. This is what was happening before with the lack of drivers. Shaw already pays $21 an hour. Ringgold pays $21 an hour. We train a guy and he leaves in, two, in three weeks as soon as he gets his license. Because he can go to Shaw and make $21 an hour. So I think maybe for the next board meeting next month, we get an agreement drawn up or some kind of contract where they'll have to sign it. I think it's worth about three grand or so. Yeah, I don't know who, who writes our agreements. Amy. Amy's a listener. Amy? Yeah. I didn't I'm know sure if we could do it in house. But yeah, for two years. And it's enforceable. If they sign, we can take it to the magistrate and right. lean right. on our house. Because it's just like we do with the, um, the education. Right. And I don't think teachers in it in the back. Is that? Uh, I don't think so. And Dave, you um, we want to do this in agreement for two years. Yeah. And are we going to continue using that testing service for two hundred and fifty dollars? Is that why we're going to keep them here for two years? No. Yeah. Well, we we usually go to the state first. Mm -hmm. It just takes time. You know, once once they told him they they weren't going to test him, I'm looking at another month and a half without him. You know, so. Rittenhouse for the 250 bucks. I mean, there's been a driver fail before the first. If you fail three times, you have to go through the training process all over again, which stinks. But they will go to Rittenhouse for the second time and pay because some of these people at the, at the uh, driving centers, just like a regular driving test, they fail you just to fail you. We've got people who fail for no reason. You know, and they're like, our trainers with them, they're like, they did nothing wrong. I mean, and to take a bus driving test anymore, you have to explain every part of the bus. You have to walk around yeah, the bus. It's ridiculous. The, the yeah. league down, it's just. You have to explain every name part. Of the stuff, and you can't work on it, so what's the use of name? Right. Name it. It's, so, it's so. So for our trainers, they're going to be certified, registered? They're done. It's already done. Yeah. It's, it's all taken Yeah, care. they had to go online. It was, they did it in my office. You know, so all that three. was. Yeah. So they're good to go for whatever. They're good to go. Otherwise, he would have been eight weeks trying to get the guy right. tested, gotcha. and then till you get the paperwork. And then if he no, fails, so sure, yeah, I then if he would have failed after six to eight weeks and then fell, you have to schedule him again. You know it's what I mean? Worth the right. yeah, I mean? And Rittenhouse is really good. They don't cut corners. But, you know, they really, you know, they're really good. And you know, they're going to fail. You don't need to do something wrong. Okay. Not like some of these other people. That works. So. Now when you went through the training, you went to testing, then you. Well, then they go to the state police or something? What's that? Our guys. The our trainers. Guys? Our no. trainers. They then went they to take the test. Yet. How about the testing? For our, to be a trainer? No, to take your bus test. Take your bus test. You go to like Uniontown Driving Center or Waynesburg. Yeah. We can't do that in-house? No. No. Because some of these companies have their own. That's a whole new certification thing. That's okay. the written houses. They're an That's independent bus doing. company. Okay. They went and got the certifications. Right. It takes six months of training. All these fees and stuff. So, because some of these these bigger bus lines have their own right test in the house testing, right? Which is a little bit easier than going driving to Waynesburg. Yeah, you know what I mean. I get it. Yeah. Um, now moving on, then Dr. Williams wanted me to bring this up. I think we talked about it at our agenda meeting we had last week. But uh, this hourly rate for the subs has got five regular bus drivers upset because. They're only making fifteen fifty five an hour, and we gave the subs an eighteen dollar an hour rate. Okay, but that's all contractual, and they got to keep their family medical benefits. So they do have the option to go to single only and move up to the twenty one. Right. They have that option. And they're going to move up as one senior driver retires in the upper tier anyway. The next person eligible moves up into the higher tier so eventually they're going to get there anyway right so i don't want to draw a line between myself and these five people but i don't get what the problem is myself you know they feel insulted because they're making less than the sub drivers making but they get family medical benefits yeah, the for the next five years or four years of this contract they grandfathered in, and that was I one don't, thing. Like I said, I don't want to. They they work for me. We all get along. I'm not saying I agree with this, but I mean, 
And if you take the difference in the pay, it averages out to be a little bit more than twenty one oh five an hour they're making because it's what about eleven grand for family benefits extra? Oh, it's extra? It's about it's twenty two thousand. Yeah. I mean total. So take away the single, single, so it's fourteen thousand. So I really don't want to say much more about it because I don't want somebody to hear what I'm saying, but they're gonna to come to you guys and the superintendent and they talk to the superintendent and they want to know if somebody can do something about it. Well, we could probably maybe take the 1555 away and do the $18 an hour with no benefits. <laughs> right. You know, I mean, I it's mean, something that we can discuss. And I think that's, they wanted to get to 18 and keep the family medical benefits. Yeah. Well, right now they can go to single only and move right. up to the 21. 21. Mm -hmm. So that's their option. Dave, when we were negotiating, I said I'd pay you 25 an hour or 30 an hour and take away the take benefits. Away the benefits. <laughs> it was 1800 a month yeah. for the family. You know and I mean? they all need the I benefits. Mean, you gotta, it that comes was why they, they kept them. You know, and Do you explain that to them? Do they... They, they don't like to hear it. I mean, they only have one vision of it. You know, and I take, don't yeah, take it either, too. Yeah. Alive, and this is probably an executive session item. Yeah. Right. And I'm, yeah. I don't know what live we uh, are. They're streaming. I mean, they're they're streaming. streaming. We have to stream our committee meetings. Yeah. So that means if anybody logs in virtually, they can. Yeah. So I don't know. Session. That's a board decision. It's not my decision. Well, we can talk about it more in executive session. Yeah. yeah, it's just all like you said, it was in the contract we negotiated. It's a contractual law. Yeah, and that's. We can talk about it. We'll okay, we'll move on. Okay, we're going to. Okay, that's, we're going to I'm asking to trade in a 2011 van and buy another used van. Um, I'm, we're doing this. The money's in the budget. I just put together a way that I get a van anymore because you can't get a van. There's thirteen thousand something in the budget anymore. Thirteen thousand dollars van is going to be not a very good van so I use the trade-in value from this van I'm going to trade in I use the money some money from the money I'm taking in because we transport a Shalloway student and we have an account to take that money in it's 100 bucks a day for that student I use some of that money I used that money last year to buy the repeater I used that money last year for a couple things and you know, I've always done that since we started out with this, this uh, person from Charlotte, that was the whole point, bring in some money. money, yeah, and that we wouldn't have to pay for some things that we wanted to get. So um, that's what I would plan on doing so I could get, and I did last year a van, and I said not to exceed 20000 We got the van for 20000 Some coincidence, right? <laughs> so, but with all the money together in the trade, and that the guy at the car dealer says, well, I'll do the 20000 So that's, I can't do 20000 in one, it's 20000 So I'm asking to do the same thing. The van's old, it's got 182,000 miles on it, it's over 10 years old, it makes no money back, and the reimbursement value is very li it's limited. After 10 years, all the vehicles lose their reimbursement value. So that's where I'm at with that. Are we um, able to add that to the agenda? It's on I think it's on it. Okay. okay, the next one, uh, van leasing, and this has just come up this morning, okay? Now, I have a, I have a five-year plan for transportation that I passed out a couple years ago to the board and half you guys weren't even on board so you don't know it. so I make copies of it that I'll pass out and give you and you can see um, where I'm coming from with this five-year plan and I don't know I think you only made 10 copies of these if you want to take one because I know you didn't see this did you? I didn't. Okay but it explains what to do for the next for the five years of the five-year plan trading in our buses because we've been leasing buses and leasing these vans, the vans are 10 years old now in 2023. So we started them, we bought them, and took over all our own transportation in 2013. So, I don't know, Joel, did you see that? Did you see that? The five year thing? Yeah. You saw it? Yeah. Okay. I'll get it to you. For all the new people, it just explains how the money is in the budget every year for leasing these buses, okay? Some of the leases are coming to an end, and we need to, we need to replace 10 vans. Okay, so we can use the money, 
It's already in the budget. That was the whole point of putting the money in the budget when we started le the leasing bus program. So that amount of money is always in the budget every year. Okay, so when one lease is going to end in the next year, now this year, next year's coming up, we need the vans. For the next three years, we're not going to lease, take on any more lease payments for buses, but we're going to have a van payment for three years. Then we'll own ten buses. Only problem is, you know how hard it is to get a vehicle right now? So, we do this to a municipal lease program that Wilson went for, is what we did ten years ago. The guy told me last month we missed the boat and we're not going to be able to get any vans for all next year. Okay? So I called him last week again and I said, look, I'm already looking at plan B because we have to replace 10 vans. And he says, let me see what I can do. I can make a couple phone calls or whatever. But he calls me back this morning. He found 10 vans in Ohio. Okay? And he says, He's going to finalize the paperwork, and I don't know how it goes with you, Crystal, with the financing and all this. A municipal <coughs> program we did ten years ago. You don't. That's all you got to go through is this program, okay? That's but he's going to need a purchase order as soon as they call him in a day or two days or a week or next week, or we're done. We're not getting any vans because it's that bad. He says you're looking dead in the water probably through 2024 for these kind of vans if you don't do this now. The money's already in the budget. The money's already in the five-year plan. I just need a, we don't even need the money. We just need a purchase order is the commitment to do this. And if they raise it up too high and the money's not right from the money we have, I'll just tell them we want nine vans instead of ten. Because they're handicapped wheelchair vans, seven of them. And if you have to go out and buy one of them off the street somewhere, and we're, right now we have four wheelchair kids that have to have wheelchair vans. So you're looking at like $70,000 if you have to go out and buy a wheelchair van. You know what that kind of stuff costs. So you said that he can call you in the next couple of days. Or He's going to call me. Yeah, he told me this morning he will call me in the next couple of days or as soon as they call him. So we would have to call. Uh, well, we have to do Yeah. I'm not sure if that's going to I mean, if he calls me by Monday, can we do something with a purchase order or permission to do a purchase well, order? If we, can have, we don't need an executive session for that, correct? No, I mean, we just need to somebody, you just need to sit. If it's, we, can, we would have just to put to it on the agenda the before, yes. before, before, Sunday. before Sunday. We would have to add it. But if he, he'll call me by Friday, but I don't think he, can, he works on the weekends. It's right, not, but Friday, if you would have to add, we had add Crystal add to it tomorrow. Right. Yeah, we can, we always can always remove. Yes. We can always remove. Right. We just can't add. Right. Yeah. I mean, he's telling me he's got it. As long as he, he's working on the paperwork, and once it's all finalized with whoever it is in Ohio, where he found, he found 10 chassis, he said. That's all he told me. So, Crystal, for at least a second, one of you let Mallory know tomorrow to add that to the agenda. And then we can take oh, it away. We would, we would need a price. Well, yes. Well, we can put we it can on there and write it. it. Like, just it has yeah. to be all. I, I'll write a motion to propose that, you know, the purchase of 10 vans, whatever, from whoever at a cost. So, right. you know what I mean? Just like you were putting a motion together. Right. right. Although I don't have the cost. That's okay. We'll leave it blank. And they can fill in the night of the meeting. Yeah, if you get it. You know, we could always the, the item instead of 10 to go 9 or whatever we're comfortable with once we know the price. Yeah. Well, right, we need to know the price and then right. we need to divide that by five years and see if that fits. Correct. And then right. we need to decrease the number until it fits. What we did last well, time, I think it was fine too, because the lease no. could be a 20% interest rate on the lease. We I don't know what the interest rate is. I think it was 113000 we paid for three years, 10 years ago, and we owned them after three years. Right. Yeah. We paid 113000 a year for 10. And you know it's probably going to be a little bit more than that. It's ten years. It was ten years ago. Yeah. Okay. So I'm saying, if it's too much, yeah. I get nine. I got it. I could do without one handicap van. We just put a motor in a handicap van last year. It's got a brand new motor. If nothing, I could use it for a spare. And we could we could get nine vans instead of ten. 
But I don't want to turn down a number of 10 to this guy and then be stuck, you know, in any other way, not being able, because we're using all the vans. I mean, there's only one spare right now. We use them all every day. That's fine, yeah. As long as we get it on the agenda, because we can always pull work, you know what I mean? It has to be there if everything works out. As soon as he hopefully calls me, I'll call Crystal by Friday, and we'll figure out what's going on there. Okay. Okay. Um, St. Sebastian field trips. I just brought this up because we just did another one. I mean, um, we did a field trip for them last year, and I just charged them with Crystal doing the payroll part of it, enough money to pay for the trip. I mean, by if you look in the through the state and what you're supposed to do for, they're in Bell Vernon. Their kids are entitled to field trips. They're entitled for transportation to field trips. They've never asked me before in 16 years I've been here, but last year they did. So we did it. So this year, about two weeks ago, I get an email just confirming the buses are going to be here tomorrow to go to. Um, wherever it was, I can't remember, Bangalore Center. I called him, I'm like, what? I said, you didn't order any buses. Because I don't remember the Bangalore Center for anything. Well, we talked about it in, in July, whenever we did the other field trip, I said, well, uh, we didn't talk about it. I said, but I'm not gonna screw you out of a field trip, or you know, you're not, not gonna say Bell Vernon was unable to do this trip, so we, I, we did it. And um, Crystal came up with the numbers again with a mileage rate or something, and I just think if we just do it for the amount, it's like five hundred and some dollars, right, Crystal? Yeah, it was roughly five hundred bucks a, a yeah, bus. A bus for the driver. So we bill them for that, but we don't really make any kind of law. We don't make any kind of profit. But you're not losing anything, right? So. And they're, Is that what you do for all their field trips? They're only good. Well, that was the second one we ever did. Okay. And then whenever. We, I was saying, you know, from now on, I got to have some email confirmation or something of these trips because the mean, amount of trips we do in Belvern, I don't like making might mistakes. Not have buses. I right. Mean, they well, might you should. Have. Well, I told them about you know, Belvern comes. Belvern comes first. They should give you a week or two yeah. weeks. Well, they, the lady down the office, lady supposedly did not confirm in July, but she talked to me and I agreed to do it again. So, you know, you I got to have the email. You got to have a paper. Right. I got to have some confirmation. Emails or something from now on, and they're only going to do one other field trip this year, so it's not a big deal. But you put a procedure together, it doesn't have to be policy, but a procedure, procedure yeah. and then send it over to them. So and I don't want to get into like Kenny Wood and all that kind of stuff. I mean, but St. Sebastian is in Belvern, you know. I go to church there, I mean, it's like I don't want to go to church and then people go, they creep don't even give us a, you know what I mean. <laughs> We can take them on trips. We just don't. We don't have to make any money. Well, you can you know? do. You can do trips if you. You know, he pays the guy. He gets the, the right. drop bus driver a little. Bit. We charge him for the gas. He Crystal will come up with some mileage thing. Now we charge him for a mile, and it all works out pretty good. So that's what that was all about. Okay. Um, the repeater at the middle school. I'm just bringing it up because the you recall, there was a work order for an additional part. That part is on back order. <laughs> And I called him this morning to, again to confirm. He's telling me he swears it's going to be here by the end of this month. So as soon as they get it, they're good to go. They're ready to put it in, and uh, that'll be the end of that. Okay, um, a couple of things that I didn't have on the agenda that's happened last minute here. Um, Transportation? Yes. Okay. The winter snow removal that you guys are talking about doing, right? Contracting it out? Mm -hmm. I mean, whoever does it, because I haven't talked to anybody about this, and I should probably have talked to Jason about this before, but um, when I'm up in the mornings doing the looking around to see what's going on, checking the roads at 4 o'clock in the morning to see if we're going to have school or delay school. I call Jason all the time and say, where are we at? You know, can you do the lots? Can you get the sidewalks? You know, if this person's going to do this, i got to have some contact information with this person. There has to be part of this agreement that they let me know what's going on in the morning because Jason would do that. And if he, I don't know if he would be involved or what is going to be the outcome whenever you decide what you're going to do, if somebody's even going to do it, or if our guys end up doing it, it's all going to be the same. I don't know, if, is there an agreement? The There's agreement stipulates the terms. When they're bidding on the job, it tells them that they have to 
um, have so many trucks out by a certain time, um, and they have to notify uh, Jason by a certain time. Like, they're 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 like it's yeah, okay. they haven't chosen the company, right? One of right. Those bids. Thursday, March. That's what he kept telling us or something. Yeah, but I, I just need to I need to be involved somehow with that. So whoever it is, and I would prefer it went through Jason, so I can just talk to him in the morning. You know it I mean? is. In, it is in the stipulations for the bid for when they're. Somebody we'll who they contact. Yeah. Or if anybody even does yeah, We may be doing it our guys, and then we'll just do like we always did. But I just wanted to bring that up just in case. Uh, the Ross Shaver Elementary PTO is requesting information on field trips. Okay. What we normally do on a regular basis for like a class, every class gets one field trip that the whole class goes on for the school year. If they want to go on another one, they have to come up with their own funding to pay for it. Okay, that's the way it's been usually for a long time. So you do one field trip per per class, per class you know, per so group that's non education. Per grade? Yes, per grade. Okay. Per oh, grade. Per grade, not per the whole class. the whole grade goes. Okay. Like the the second grade went to the science center last week or something. In each building, sure. right? Everywhere. Mary yeah, and, and, and for the elementary kids. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the PTO now wants to know what do we want to do for them for field trips because they understand that it's done for free but what can they do and can they do field trips and are we going to charge them to do field trips? Well, I think it would be the same as the same Sebastian. The knowledge now yeah, is just enough to... Or if they get one field trip, I mean they do in-house stuff, like they come up to the stadium for the end of the year. Yes. Like maybe the same, like we don't charge for that kind of stuff. But like an all day field trip where you're gone all day, you tie up two, three, uh, three buses, three drivers, you got to have three subs or something working for them. I mean, it's, it gets a little bit pricey to do it just for free for everybody. So I told the lady I would bring it up tonight and have some answers for her. Right. She doesn't want to discuss it or Wait. something. Just, I'm confused. Could you clarify this? Because my daughters go on a field trip every year at Marion, mm -hmm. and Ross Traver does that as well. Yes, one field and, trip per class. And they want an additional one? Is that what they're yes. asking? The PTO wants to do their own field trips. Per class or? Well, okay. she didn't so clarify. I think there She's was a miscommunication. Didn't even just pay the rate. Well, I mean, we always try to That would use the yeah. same formula yeah. that we used to shape the back. You have yeah. the yeah. driver's yeah. hours, right. the mileage. Right. Yeah, I would just pay. They would charge. Depending on where they got off. Right. We can't do it. You got to figure right. fuel. Right. So same as you're charging per mile. Per hour of the driver. Right. And anything else, or is that it? Just covering the cost of that, or the wear and tear. I do a wear and tear sometimes. I use. How many? Yeah, so they would just have to pay. I would charge them. I would the do the same as Sebastian. This if it's above thing. the one yeah, that we gave I would use the same there. So if they take a second that trip, they would be surcharged. Have they done additional trips in the past? No. Um, they haven't done a whole lot. I think they're talking so they about doing it. You know what I mean? I think they may have done one here, one there, and now all of a sudden they want information. I wonder how they're picking and choosing what class to Yeah, I don't know. They want to take the whole, the whole school or the whole... They do. This is just yesterday, so I didn't get a whole lot of information from her, and I just told her I did have a meeting tonight, and I would bring it up and see where we're at. But I'll just tell her we're going to have we're gonna have to pay you know, the charge. Field trips usually have to come to the board for approval. So we would know about them. Right. You know? Yeah. Yeah. I, don't, I don't think we do elementary ones. Well, it should, we should. We, they we never should. have a flag. We'll talk about um, you mean PTO ones? Right, but I don't think we have for the elementary ones in the past because I think we brought it up in the past and we were told that we'll have to discuss that yes. because I, it, 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 there's no reason why if, we should. I mean, we do it for if the district's else. providing the busing, you should yeah. right. as a motion. You yeah, should be absolutely. knowing where everybody's going. You should know where right. they're yes. yeah. I yeah. mean, that was my it's thing like previously. Baseball team goes somewhere in high school. The it's the band. Right. It should be that was any my grade, opinion previously. Anything. Yes. Yes, and I was. Poo -poo on that. So well, you don't vote on. 
And then if they want a second trip, then it would be at the expense right. of the PTA to pay right. for the busing. That's all right. The so the district gives them but one free you know, one. That doesn't happen now. If there's a second one, it would have to be at the expense of the PTA. Kids go in places all the time. Like every payroll is at a timesheet on where they're going. But it's never board approved unless it's over different things and go different places. So we should probably. That's where the line has been. I mean, you guys have changed it, but that's where the. If it's overnight, it needs approved, or if they're missing school, like not attending school that day. These kids all attend school when they go to Millcroft or wherever they're going. Right. Meadowcroft. So the unions want to discuss it further, or I just tell her it's ongoing, I'll get back to her. Let me clarify something. They, I would let them know it's oh, going to be St. Wait. Sebastian formula. Yeah. That they are, they will right. have to pay. Yeah. That's for sure. Yeah. So let me tell that. Well, yeah. I forgot for their They may have to ah. come to us for a motion for a, the second field trip. Right. Because awesome. again, we were not aware that they had to pay for the second one. I mean, we were not. We were just. Well, they've never paid. We've never charged the PTO for anything. Okay. But I think they were told yeah, they this were gonna, year that there was going, going to be a cost. Yeah, that, uh, that was going to be, um, that was relayed that there was going to be a cost going forward. Even for the initial one. Right, that that was going to, oh, yeah, potentially. So Ken's suggesting that you and he and I and Zach all sit down and with the PTO, mm -hmm. and we'll talk to them about the second request. Um, and that he agrees that we should have the approval of their trips Monthly, just like we do anything else. Mm -hmm. We should ask them for that. Um, we, just, we need a procedure. Again, it doesn't have to be policy, right. but we should have a procedure in place. Just like so there's a facility usage request, there should be a vehicle usage request possible. That's a lot of... Oh, and and Steve would get that because you, you know how to schedule the drivers. Right. right. Dave knows where everybody's going. Not just Yeah. Well, okay, there's so a lot of places. You're going to follow up with them. We can work. We can work. What are you going to follow up with? Just the cost of the field trip? Yes. And then the motion. So I don't need you just want to just decide if they get one, are they getting one, the unions are saying, or no, they're getting none for free. They're getting one they get trip. They're free, yeah. So, right, so every classroom can be entitled to a trip, or like they do it by the grade level or whatever. Great. But, and then if there's a second one, then you would use the St. Sebastian formula. Okay. So we're not yes. making money off of them. We're just covering the expense costs, of the additional yeah. trip. So they are entitled to one trip per class, the PTO. And anything over that would have to be board approved and paid for. Well, we're going to ask that they approve all of their trips. All all their trips. So okay. that the board knows like where they're going and when. Okay. Which really they should because the, the, even the first trip, the district's paying for the buses. So. And this will have to be further, I, I, I would think that we would do an executive session, but then there's also clubs and groups that do things as well. So we, you're getting into the weeds here. We're, we're, we have to really probably take a look at clubs and groups that go on trips like to Florida that week? week? Not, not to Florida. Oh, I'm talking about like you've got the Interact Club. Anything that leaves, you've anything got that leaves the district. Anybody that leaves the premises. You've got different. I mean, like that FBLA. The club does FBLA goes places. Yeah, like gifted, so, gift, yeah. gifted goes life places. Skills. But that's educational. Okay. So. And life skills is still doing. It's all education. That's part of their curriculum. Okay, so then that's. that's, 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 that's so we have another discussion. Yeah. Maybe yeah. 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 Monday or around whatever. Yeah. Yeah. An executive session on Monday. I think that's good. Saying, you can at least give them some information, Dave, about the cost. The second one will, you know, yeah. be the St. Sebastian formula. Yeah. And okay. uh, did somebody one tell free them and anything after that is cost. Did somebody tell them that the first trip was going to start costing? Is the first trip is not costing. Well, that's, that's where there's I think there the was confusion. some confusion there, though. I right. think maybe there were wires crossed in whatever conversation was had. So we just need to. Right. I've never talked to the lady before, so I don't know where she I've got never any talked information to the lady. from. Ken, did you speak to anybody from the RESPTO? Ken? Regarding that situation, no. He said no. Maybe they have a kid that goes to the St. Sebastian's and okay. some something charge. Okay. Okay. So we'll work on that extra yeah. stuff. Anything else <coughs> under transportation? Uh, that's it for transportation. Does anybody have anything for me? Job. It's busy. Absolutely. I appreciate it. Food service? Yeah, food service is next. Um, 
administrative review process is complete and I received notification, a notification letter. Uh, this was on, I want to say, since last February it started. And we just got done with it in October because we have a ways to go yet with our food service and how it's being run, which I have to do that. And I'm in the process of doing it um, with all the food components and the nutritional analysis that was lacking whenever I took over. And I was not aware, you know, of what it all was involved with. And I found out the hard way, but there was no financial hit, which is good. I'm getting the training I need now, which is good. Uh, I have the staff getting trained, which they weren't getting any training, which is good. Um, and it's kind of an ongoing thing. So they will be back in 25, 26, and if it's not right by then, there'll be a financial hit. So it's going to get right before the start of the next school year is my goal. So we're already, I'm about a third of the way there. I need to get there. And then my head cooks need to get there. Because like Bell Vernon has their own, they're called production records. You have to fill out every day as the uh, numbers of, of kids you're feeding and stuff. And the previous guy, he just had it on a Bell Vernon computer in a file. Well, you got to go through the software that the state provides. And I found that out the hard way. So we got all that fixed. I'm not doing it. My head cooks aren't doing it yet. They're doing it the old way, but it's acceptable but we need to get to the other way, and they don't know how to do it yet, so I'm going to have to learn how to do it first, teach them how to train them how to do it, and it's just going to take a little bit of time. But it was, uh, I don't know, for the summer, I mean, and the problem was they failed the nutritionals for the, he told, I had to do the first four weeks of this school year, and even the lady from Primera Edge, she's like, you're well known to Primera Edge because they're killing you. They don't do this to anybody. And me and her was on the phone every day, and she was screen sharing with me every day on top of everything else when school started. And we, found, we failed the first four weeks of school, so he made me do the next four weeks. And she's like, you're kidding me. She goes, every time my phone rings, I cringe because I see her calling me again, and I just hope it's over with. So anyway, we found out how to do it all, make it all right, how to pass everything. We passed everything, and everything was good, and we're good. So um, that's over with. Um, the cafeteria, we do a thing that's called offer versus serve. It's how you offer the kids so much and you have to offer them like breakfast, they have to have three components and lunch has to, you have to offer them five. They don't necessarily have to take five, but I made all our staff train on that. You can go on this website, it's called the School Nutrition Toolbox and get the training that you need. Prints out a certificate when you pass. Every one of our cafeteria employees has passed that. I have it all in a personnel file for all of them now. There was no such thing in the past how they have to do that. I'm going to make them do it every year. Um, it doesn't cost nothing to do it. The only thing is if they do it on their own time, like the, the one building came and did it on uh, Monday when we didn't have school. So if they come and do that, then they won't pay. But I mean, other than that, it has to be done to stay. We did, like, that's another thing we were failing on. So they have to have all the required components in the offering in order for it to count as a reimbursable meal. So that's why it's important because we want right. them to count as reimbursable meals. And if you're missing a component, like two fruits or a vegetable, then they can come in and not allow you to claim those meals. So you would rather them throw it away? Yes, you have to put it on the tray. And what they do with it after that, you know, there could be like a share table. Okay. And I told uh, uh, Dr. Williams whenever he was there in March or February, whenever it was, I can't remember, the guy from the state, she offered it, Mary, and she offered the kid a milk, and he's like, she, the kid don't need the milk. He already has a juice and a fruit and two fruit, or a fruit juice and a fruit. He don't need no milk. So we were giving him milk away and really didn't need to give him milk away. So they didn't know none of this, you know. And I really didn't know it at the time neither, but now through the training, we know it, and they all know it. But they never had the training before. So, and, and the thing is, you're required to have like a minimum of three hours of training every year, every staff member. 
All they ever got here was civil service training, which is an hour, it only counts for an hour. So we did uh, the training, which I'm updating on the training for the staff and myself. They did the um, offer versus serve training. I'm going to have them do the civil service training and get a certificate for that. So that'll be uh, the three hours for this year. So there's just certain things we have to make sure we're doing, and you have to keep records of this stuff for three years when they come to do their review, you have shown that you're doing everything. So we're doing it now. Like I said, we're getting there. So um, the walk-in cooler or walk-in freezer at Marion, we had a little snag. We were trying to get that done before school started, but the freezer door is split in half. And the freezer door is an insulated double door that takes several months to get. So that wasn't going to work. So we had the door resealed. We had the little, um, all the hinges tightened up, and the freezer's working fine. The problem with the freezer in the beginning, and why we come up with this idea to do another freezer anyway, is the floor's raising. And it's causing the door, to will cause the door to split in half. But the thing is, things were uh, thawing out right inside the freezer because there was holes and there was more marigating in there. So right now everything's working fine and it's going to continue to work fine. And we're going to order the door so it's here and the day after school's out in June we're going to do this job where we're going to make the cooler to freezer and the freezer to cooler switch. Because we can't do it with school being in. There's no possible way. It's too risky. Yeah, it's too risky. So everything's set. I got the refrigeration guy ready. He's going to have the door ready to go. We'll do it as soon as uh, school's over. And I think we'll be fine getting through this year. And so. then you can move off and then you can transfer all the food to the other because right. then it won't be as full. When school will be out. So yeah, we right. can use up the you inventory and not have a lot to, to deal with. Yeah. So. Well, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, we're, uh, we did apply for a grant last week. Um, she helped. Dr. Williams did all the grunt, the grunt work because I don't have any experience in grant writing. That's what I told him in the beginning. I've never written grants and it's time consuming and it's something I needed some help with so he decided to help me and he did all the grunt work. I supplied the quotes and got the quotes and we all Put contributed. There, yeah, we all kind of contributed. Effort. Yeah, it was a team effort. What did we write the grant? Uh, we wrote the grant for, let me see, It's like eighty-four thousand dollars total. A uh, stack oven for Marion Elementary, a double door refrigerator for Ross Traver Elementary, a uh, food warmer and proofer for both the high school and Ross Traver Elementary, a steamer for the middle school, and a milk cooler for Ross Traver Elementary. So a little bit of something for each. Whether we get the grant or not, we don't know, but we're trying. So. Are these needed? I mean. On a scale of their, the steamer's going to go at the middle school pretty soon. It's like thirty-eight grand for one. Yeah. So yeah. So let's hope we get this at eighty-four thousand. Yeah, right? and if we don't, you know, we we'll just have to try again next year. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, we we put in over what the allotments probably going to be, but you never know if some people don't apply for it. They set aside a pocket of money, and then they say that they're going to award like seventy-five different people the grants. So that's how we kind of came up with the rough figure of what people would get. We overshot that. It was yeah, much higher than that, but anything that we could get. And right? I went to the head we cooks. we never know what else may need. Right. I went yeah. to the head cooks and I said, what's your biggest need? Because we're applying for this grant. And they told me, you know, one, two, three. And then we did something for everybody. You know I mean? <coughs> nothing, is gone, nothing is not working right. at this point. Well, yeah, but but I mean, some, all this stuff's going to go sooner or later. You know what I mean? Yeah. And if we so, can get it replaced... We need to start putting this stuff in the budget each year and so we can start right. 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 So if we don't get some of those I'll get it, you know. And I'm right I'm knocking away some of the stuff, the littler stuff, you know what so I mean? So you have a list of things, your your priority list of yeah. what we had a list when Crystal was putting together them the Esther funds and all that oh, stuff was lunch. going on. I had all kind of stuff on there. You know, we still have the oven at the middle school, which I'm gonna talk about that next too, but um 
Yeah, I got uh, a convection oven at Ross Shaver Elementary. We've been hitting, the, uh, we just put a milk cooler in at Marion because when the health inspector says I'm going to fail you because the milk's not 38 degrees, you got to get a new milk cooler. You know, yeah. it's not it's something not you can put off. Right. Yeah. He said, I come here again and that milk's 39 degrees, you're fouled. And I'll shut you down. I mean, that's, and being in a restaurant business myself, they'll shut you down. And you can't shut down the kids from eating, but they'll, they'll shut you down. They tell you once, they're not telling you twice. So if things like that happen, you don't have no choice, you know. You know, that's what I told Crystal a couple of times. She's like, you need a milk cooler, get a milk cooler. I mean, it is what it is. Sense. You know, there's no choice. So hopefully we get something out of it. Right? I Even think if it's pretty good as a taste. You mean, so. Dave, when you go to a place on a Saturday and they, it's yingling night, <laughs> and the yingling, the Your cooler mind. was... There was an issue with the cooler, and the yingling wasn't available. Did you ever hear about that? Yeah. <laughs> it happens. <laughs> those, those, those things happen. <laughs> those, yeah, those things happen. You just got to deal with it. Well, Dave, thank you, and Dr. Williams, and Elisa, and anyone else who worked on that grant for going above and beyond. Yep, hopefully we get some. Don't took the run of it because the, just the system, the navigating the system is impossible. But the narrative piece was easier. Um, yes, and we did uh, reach out to her, uh, to Maureen Ryan, talk with her about it. Um, but she really didn't end up contributing to this piece of it because we handled. Yeah, you guys didn't. Pull we were that able part. to. Yeah. And the questions they asked, I mean, we answered the questions the best we could. You have to answer how it's going to help nutritional thing and all that kind of stuff. Like she went through it with us. She talked through like this is what you need for this part. Okay. This is what you need for this part. That kind of a thing. There was the intention of having her look at it one last time before it went in, and um, it submitted. So it was like, okay, then we're just going to have to put it in the hands of the committee so. right but. okay so uh, the middle school oven it's a stack oven and that was another thing about getting any kind of equipment you get you can't control when you get it um, and it came after school started of course so we had an installation quote from the people that do our work on all our stuff and they came out and looked at it, and they're like, well, we're going to need a couple of days to get the old one out of here because we just you just can't whip the oven out of here. The hood's connected to the oven. The oven's been in the wall for 40 years. Like, what's going to happen when we pull it out? So we don't know what we're looking at. Right. So the oven is at the Plex back with the bu in the back of the bus garage. It's in two big boxes. It's too big to put at the middle school. I'm targeting either the Thanksgiving break or the Christmas break to have it installed. And I was not satisfied with the response from the people that do our regular work because the one guy just started there the day before and didn't even know they had a lift in the truck. And the other guy was like, I can't do this and I can't do this and I can't do that. So I'm looking elsewhere. We're going to have somebody that knows exactly what they're doing come in when we're down for school and take the old one out and get the other one put in. But it's just a little bit of a delay. That's it. Okay. When did you say that was? Uh, Thanksgiving break or Christmas, Christmas break, break. <laughs> whatever they call me. It's AIG is a company that does other. Ch they're the one that fixed the freezer door for me. Mm -hmm. And them, I called them. They're gonna get back to me. They do this stuff, and I think I'll have them do it as long as the price is right. Okay. okay um, sore subject coming up. Crystal's not gonna like this one. Negative balances in the cafeteria. Okay, they're already up. They were down when I, when I first took this job. I think it was 60000 for the year. Is that what it was? Okay. Um, I have the paperwork. I mean, I'm a, this is all public knowledge, right? I'm allowed to say this. I everybody was just telling these people's names. Everybody. Breakfast. No. Breakfast. Breakfast. No. Well, no, I thought their status from last year carried over for the first. No, but not not free because everybody was free, only if they were free. Okay, so those other people... Until October. Okay. So starting the first of the year, the ones that had to pay had to pay. And the head cooks are telling me some of these kids aren't even attempting to pay because they've been free for the last two years. And I think we do have a no-charge policy. No, we don't. We don't. Because the state said you better get that out of there right now or we're going to shut you down. You cannot have a no-charge policy. Is there a limit? We had a no-charge policy when everything was free. Because I redid everything 
with the and the lady from the uh, the, from the administrative review. She called me. She goes, "You better get that out of there right now." They were looking at our whole no charge policy. Okay. Okay. And I'll just read a couple of these things. What is the total? Right now, it's over five grand. Okay. Now we're allowed to send notifications out, which the first one went out Tuesday. After notifying twice, two notifications if you're fifty dollars or more. I'll read you the stuff here. You can take them to the magistrate. Okay. Problem is, you're not allowed to tell a kid they have a negative balance. You're not allowed to turn them down. You're not allowed to offer them an alternate sandwich. You're not allowed to do nothing. I thought you have you, to go through the parents. Can you um, hold their report card or anything like no. that? Like are, are they nope. set up for the automatic calls so the parents know? Yes, they got it Tuesday. And I'm already getting calls. And some of them, a couple of them are, are free because of a Medicaid thing or something, insurance, and in the system they were showing is paid, and they rung up a balance. So I could, get, I could get rid of, they should have been free. I had a foster kid, they're free. And everybody in their family's free, automatically. So them automatic ones, you know, it's just, some of the kids appear to not even try to pay. And we're all, uh, probably looking at going to have to start going to the magistrate. Well, don't, isn't there a way to put money on their accounts online? Yes. 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 I have okay. the app. And it's auto We need to make sure that they <laughs> put that, that out on all the websites. Well, I think first we need to make sure that everyone who's free is filling out the application. Right. Who right. should be free. Like step one. Step two is, I don't know if there's some kind of charge limit. $50, right? No, that was $50, and then you can take them to the magistrate. Right. After two times. Negative no, no, staff members. That's going to be a real No, I'm not, not very many. We, we stopped real staff members a long time ago. Well, Sorry. I think um, we should follow the uh, procedure for the magistrate, because that's Two yeah, we have an attachment to our to our policy. There's an attachment. It says it sends two notices of negative balance, collection of unpaid meal charges. If a negative balance reaches fifty dollars or more, the district sends a final notice to the parent or guardian for payment. If no response is given, it will be sent to the local magistrate. That's in our policy. And I would follow that. Yeah, I mean it's, but it's getting. Is there a way that we can man like? We had talked about the Sapphire in order for them to access anything, they have to, have to, have to fill out that form. It has, it, there has to be some mandate. That was supposed to be pop. That was supposed to pop up first. Right, it was supposed to pop up. Yeah. But Sapphire apparently didn't work. Sapphire. And we need to reevaluate the fifty bucks because if every kid did it, it's one hundred and twenty thousand. Yeah. Well, there should be step. There should be at least three, four, three, three people in here that breakfast? should not be. Sorry. Breakfast is free. <clears throat> is he was trying to be creative. Are they, yeah. <laughs> are they not charging not at the Alcourt line? You can't have breakfast that late. Like, no. They start serving lunch at 10 30. That's what I'm saying. Some it's not an exhaustive like list. Like 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 you know. Like you know. Like like can't be creative. Just breakfast for lunch. No. Lowering fifty dollars. No. 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 No but negative balances went out every single month, and we kept them in a binder so that when we went to the magistrate, it was easy to pull out that section of the binder and have the documentation of teachers. Yeah, I do have a question. You do have teachers. That way you have a, a you have yeah. teachers. Yeah. 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 They were notified. They were notified. There's nothing major there. I don't think. No. Right. But we also call. We, we had somebody call in the heavy hit. But they are printing in this list. Anybody the ones $50. This is only like squares there. Not even a quarter inch. That's so a big number. Change that. Yeah. This what is the thing? I'll pay. Give me the first. After $50. <laughs> they go to yeah. the magistrate. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. We don't have to change that. Change that. Right. The notification on a Monday. It should go to everybody with the nation. I'm sure. I'm sure they care. Even if they're just negative a dollar, they'll get a letter. 
We can help. They'll help the administration will help you. Yeah, yeah. So you know, that, that's these are the kind of things I need help with. Yes. I mean, all these letters and mailing out notifications. Well, they're just they're it's overwhelming. Right. I mean, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and we should. I mean, we follow what we say, and if you don't pay, you're going to magistrate. Is that a carryover, maybe? But Dave, do you want to see how the line would go to magistrate? Like $5 and above. We've got some drivers now. But how are you going to, I mean, I know you do it for truancy, but how are you going to take all these people to the magistrate? I don't go to the magistrate for truancy. I do all the legwork. The principal's attending. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. I do all the legwork and all still, the letters. That's still a lot. That's yeah. a lot of filing charges, though, too. All I know is when my kids went to school, and it's, it's you know, I would get a phone call for like five cents. You know, I knew when my kid was over. Well, right. And you could set a limit that at $5 it automatically reloads. I mean, that's, and then if you put all your kids together, you only pay the service charge once. Well, right. And I'm going to be honest because I have one kid that goes through money a little faster than the other. Um, I say check every Friday. I say I have a thing on my phone that says check lunch money, just so I have a little reminder for. I my never phone. did that. I would just send money in at the beginning. Of the week. And I get phone calls from parents like you to say, "Why am I getting these calls every Tuesday for ten cents?" But I mean, hmm, it's I never called you. no. But like you're saying, <laughs> you used to get calls. You used to get calls. I'd be like, okay, that's great. And I would send money in. You know. Yeah. Like, no. What some what parents call like flipping up. You know. Some call flipping out. You're caught every week on for two dollars, but I mean, it's, if you're below zero, you're getting right. caught. I mean, was any of this carryover money from pre-pandemic? No. This Last year was like nothing. This is all fresh. No, we wiped so it off. We cleaned the slate every year. We wiped it off. Last year, yeah, yeah. already. Yeah. Well, well, then I'm just the auditor. Maybe they should. It was only like two hundred some dollars last year, and everybody was free. Or they like buying two lunches, and they shouldn't be allowed to do that. Like. Any day lunch, but maybe not. And then, like, you can like, people pay for our businesses. If you have a little bag here. Yeah. We can see what they're buying. Here's that. That's Zach's money. 50 cents, okay. That's what Zach's Tell him I paid his bill. 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 Hey, first time no, around for first time around balance. for the school board. God bless Joe Grandisol. He called me up and reminded me I owe twenty five dollars. Um, Are we able to do that? <laughs> no. You like you can't deny anything. Uh, I'm saying extras. Like they have a meal. They're always right. They don't have to get a second meal. They're not allowed the extras. They're not going to. They're not going to charge anything. If they have a negative balance, obviously, but I don't think you can tell them they can't get the second meal if they want one. They, You're not allowed yeah, to do that. Yeah, they, well, they do. Yeah. Well, they don't usually have a, enough food. Yeah, if they run they out of food. food. You're not getting none. I'm telling you, squat. They, they and really you know, this is a through. conversation. Because okay. a, we have two left. I We're going to have Dave button. email the information to Crystal. Crystal's going to go through it. Right. And they're going to set up a monthly, um, they're going to send out a monthly statement Correct. for anybody that's in the negative. Yes. But and maybe we'll put the limit on you, maybe negative, if there anything negative, and five. Yeah. Well, and if you go to the magistrate, people will know that you're going to go to the magistrate. They'll okay. start paying. Yeah. Okay. If you do nothing, it's going to be sixty grand again. Oh, no. they'll, be, they'll be responsible yeah. for the magistrate charges then. Right. Well. Right. I right. Like cost the district anything. Right. It's, it makes. That's why I said can. All right. But I do have a question. Um. If that's, you know how, for instance, el, kinder, el, kindergarten and first grade get four chicken nuggets. That same meal is then feeding a sixth grader. That isn't going to feed a sixth grader. But that's the requirement from the state. Right. It's exact. Because St. Sebastian brought the same thing up. Because they were the saying FDA. we were shorting them the, uh, chicken strips or whatever. Well, so whatever, but that's not, I mean, it doesn't. Because you're in, because we have elementary. sixth graders in our elementary, you have to give them, that's that's an upgraded portion. That's what the middle schools get. Stacy, you would be surprised what the high school gets. Yeah. Well, if the elementary is getting four chicken nuggets, what's the high school getting? Six? Get, yeah. Maybe. Yeah. So two more for a high school student. Yeah, high school I mean, it, it is what it is, and it's the regulations. Yeah, there's nothing you can do. I mean, right. they, it's Unless by the state. Unless you buy a second lunch, or, or they do. I pack your lunch. 
because we're getting well, right. Right. I could I couldn't give you a lunchbox big enough. I'm just telling you. They it could be a buy. fortune. It could be a fortune. Well, and again, I mean, I don't mind. Child that's a big eater. Right. I don't mind paying for it. Point. I just it's think it there would have to be a better, see where you're from. a better way to make it, you know, like a like a mighty meal like they do at well, yeah, like McDonald's a, right. or, you know, I would pay more for have, larger quantities. We have an out a la carte menu. Do. Yes. Like we do. But a lot yes. of times they run out of food, so there's no way to buy more. Yeah, and we're working on that issue with the elementary especially because, you know, last year they, they were short-handed. We had no subs. The ladies, were, the ladies were wore out by 1.30. All they wanted to do was get the heck out of there. But uh, I told them at the end of the year we're going to work on it to get a better situation for this year. It is a much better situation. So, and those kind of things, I already brought that up about if somebody wants a second meal and it's like, well, if we have enough food, well, have enough food. I mean, why are you getting that where you're that close to not having enough food? You could be a little bit better than that. You know, I mean, how many elementary kids really want a second meal? Maybe a handful. There are some. But, I mean, we can prepare a little bit better. And I explained to them, you know, we should have a little bit of food to be able to do that if somebody wants something. So. And you probably, they probably know which kids at this point are going to want additional Right, meals. and it's sixth graders, like you're right. saying. It's not a first grader. No, I mean, it's not for sure. It's just a handful of kids, so right. we'll work on that. Um, okay, so we'll get with Crystal and work on this negative bias thing and have a definite, I mean, I, if I go to go to the magistrate, I'll go. I mean, we got we got to do something or it's going to be 60 grand again. No. It just, there's no, just no. Oh, we're going. We had, I thought we had it. It was better. Before the pandemic hit, it was about it. It, people, it, you know, were, people were in that mindset, but once that yeah, yeah now everything's now, free. We just now. have to re, re, yeah. retrain. It's yeah, reprogram. Yeah. It's reprogram. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, um, free breakfast. The numbers for October so far. We are up, which we need to be staying up and getting up even more because we're getting reimbursed for every free breakfast. So, uh, we're doing a couple of things. Um, at the elementary school, uh, they did add the uh, car, the breakfast cart at Marion, so to try, try to increase the number of kids that want to eat. They like going up to that cart. It's a different thing. You can still get a reimbursable meal off the carts. Okay, we want to put more signage up, things like that. Maybe they have the school make announcements that breakfast is free. Because some of these kids, you get on a bus, some of these kids don't know their address or where they live. Let alone the breakfast is free. Has anybody told them? You know what I'm saying? I mean, I think we need to do a little bit more to try to increase it even more. Can they have a breakfast? Do they eat in their classrooms? Like, can they be delivered to classrooms? That's good. They take off their breakfast card to go. I mean, I don't know how strict they are actually in the classroom, but uh, uh, they're is, not uh, much. Jackie's not eating breakfast at school because she has school work in the morning. Right. Be careful. Does um, RES have the breakfast card as well? Um, no, but we're going to see if we can get them one. I think there might be an old one over at the high school that maybe we can borrow. Um, especially littler kids, they like something different, like something that's yeah, neat. You know, going up to that car every day. And, uh, but it's like that would be nice. It's on four wheels, you know, moving around. Yes. I got your security line, grab a What's on? Why is there a disparity? What's our numbers? What's why your one eating from? Why does one school not eat breakfast? Because we know why it's hot as much. What? They have breakfast at RES, right? Yeah. yeah. Sure. The numbers what are your average yeah. numbers? Um, MES for 21 days in September, 21 serving days. 4254 at Ross Shaver, 4202 at Mary. Okay. 1593 at the middle school and 2145 at the high school. So that was 21 days. For 10 days in October, high school was at 2500. They're up 350 already. Middle school was at 1900. They're up 300. Ross Travers, 4700. I mean, that's these are our goals. 4700 at both elementary schools by the end of the month. But being it's only um, in 10 days, Ross Travers at 2377, Marion's at 20 or 2313. So my goal is to get to 4700 at both schools 
okay, which they only did 4,200 for the 21 days in September. So we're going to be up. We need to get up more so we get more money coming in. From Can we people. set a part like in the lobby, like after your security line, to like grab and go? Or are you staff? Like, do you have the staffing for that? Uh, no. Uh, there's only so many people there because right, they start the coming in at 8 30. Yeah. I think they wait in the cafeteria. Yeah, so. Um, so 4,700 divided by 21 yeah, days is roughly 224 meals, breakfast in each building. So we have buildings of 650 kids apiece. Right. And so just so to do that now. So he needs about, yeah, like 224 kids a day. Out of 650 kids, we ought to be able to come up with that. Yeah, whatever. So this car. <laughs> we'll make it. Do the grabbing. The go. social media thing, the Peach Star style, that stuff. Whatever we can do to keep getting it out there. Because we did do that to start the school year, but we didn't. That I don't know that we keep repeating it. You yeah, know what it I mean? should be on constantly. Yeah, all the time. Breakfast is yeah, free. We, I mean, we put it on the news numbers, too. I don't know. Yeah, that's Jeff and them. Jeff and Greg and them do that. Is morning work getting in the way of kids eating breakfast? Better or not be. But what time do kids start rolling in at the elementary schools? 8.15. They can't get it. And they eat till 8.15. Until 8.50? They can get breakfast. So, yeah. When's the last bus arrive usually? 8.30, 8.35 at the latest. 8.30 at Marion, 8.35 over here. If somebody's running late, we've had an 8.40, but then we extend breakfast. Like, they'll run it over a couple minutes, so. Okay. Um... Last thing is this review of the staff. We have four head cooks, one in each building. Uh, the high school now, we have eight people. Middle school, we have four. And we did cut three jobs two years ago, and we're going to continue with that philosophy. And like I said, it was pretty brutal last year, but we're not doing as many lunches, obviously, because it's not free for everybody, but still. Uh, Marion, we have seven, and Ross Shaver, we have six. We have 15 subs now. We have 10 of them that are actually active. Five of them were a little wishy-washy. But we have 10 subs. And it's a much better situation again. And again, we went from $10 an hour to $12 an hour. And I think that made a difference. So thanks for that. The ladies in the cafeteria say thanks for that. Because they actually have subs now that will work whenever people call off. You know, we have an issue because um, in Crystal, it was just a lot of these ladies, they have kids in school, they have no one at home, if something's wrong with their kids, they got to go home or they can't come to work. So, you know, subs are needed and we finally have some, so that's Great. going. What was your high school middle school? High school middle school numbers? Yeah. Uh, the staff. High school eight, middle school eight four, and four. Yeah, seven, or yeah, six. Got it. And how many subs do we have? We have 15, 10 are active. We have five that are a little wishy washy, so we've got some good subs. So too. we have 25. Yeah, all right. Is that no, we have 15 total subs. No, employees, no, no. you employees. have 25. 25? Does that include your cooks? And four head cooks. And, and four head cooks, so we're at 29. Some of them are really good too. So. Okay, that's all I have. Anybody have anything Dave, for me? Well, did we want to do the executive session on the bus driver pay situation with Dave here? Or? If we could do that before from these meetings. If we could do that, is there any way we could do that right now for five minutes? We, can. Yeah, we, can. Yeah. we need to yeah. end this. Yeah, did you end? Meeting. You're good. Because I got something I got to bring up, and I'm not doing it. Yeah, I just.